Just finished the drive review with the Hurricane in the Laramie. Now we're going to go do the exact same loop with a Bighorn, but with the Pentastar Hybrid. And let's see how they compare in fuel economy, power, transmission, shifting, overall feel of the vehicle. Also going to compare how the Laramie interior compares to the Bighorn interior. Let's do this. We have both Bighorns for 2025. Both of these even the same color. Both of them both have 20 inch wheels. Except right off the bat, you're gonna notice one's got the blacked out grill headlights and one doesn't. But there's more to it than that. This one actually has the V6 Pinastar e-torque and this has the Hurricane. What other differences do you have? All right, let's look at the badging off the rear. Blacked out, chrome emblems, no dual exhaust. But what's interesting is, let's go over the window sticker on this truck. This truck's 2025 Ram 1500 Crew Cab. This truck is a 23Z package, which is $1,405 option. It's a level one, which is $1,695. It's got the 355 rear axle, nine speakers in the interior, and the 20 inch wheels for a grand total, 59,360. 21 mix city, 21 mix fuel economy, 19 city, 21, 24 highway. Similar looking interior. Soft touch, fabric soft touch middle, soft touch door. Auto windows, got your storage in the sides, similar looking seating. Power seat here, manual passenger side, same as the other truck. Let's look at the payload, 1,695 pounds. What other differences do we have here? Well, some of the difference you notice right off the bat, this gets you the eight inch display versus the 12 inch, but you do get more manual controls here. Call me old fashioned, I actually like this more just because the 12 inch display personally doesn't make my life any easier, but the downside is you lose dual climate control. You still got the same storage in the middle. You don't have the, you don't have the wireless charging there. You still got the same trans controller there with four auto. You do have a little bit lower grade uh, instrumentation panel though. You don't have all the digital readout in the middle. Similar looking steering wheel, similar storage in the middle. Both have the same dual glove box. Both have the same dash layout with Alpine speakers. Both have sunglass holders, garage door remote. Both have similar second row, same cup holder, same HVAC controls. So for $4,000 more, you ask yourself, is having the Hurricane motor, the bigger display, the wireless charging, the bigger instrumentation panel worth it to you, and you get running boards, black emblems, black rims, and this sick looking front end and a dual exhaust. To me, I think it's a no-brainer, just because I think this aesthetically looks better. But it's nice that Ram gives you so many options now. All right, let's look under the hood of the standard Pentastar motor now. Got the cool Ram emblem there with the 3.6 liter V6 emblem on top of the intake. Same type of coolant system, a ton more space in here for serviceability. Man, if I was running a fleet of trucks and I was looking for payload, not towing a lot, I would way rather have this system. You could much easier work on this than the Hurricane. Also check that out. It's like that little motor thing. I think that's what's tied to the hybrid system to power this when you go down the road. Battery's still in the same lo location. Junction box all in the same location. Still has your power assist braking. Still has the same insulation on the hood. All right, let's go for a drive. So appreciate Dick Scott Motor Mall in Fowlerville, Michigan allowing me to do this comparison for you guys. It's gonna be interesting. They've got some of the first 2025 Ram 1500s available in the country right now. Ram has been really struggling to keep up with demand and there hasn't been any 24 Ram 1500s out there for a really long time. Some of the changes I noticed right off the bat after coming out of the Laramie, so the steering wheel feels a little bit different. You notice right here, there's something missing and there's some stuff missing here. It's because you did lose your drive mode option. The instrumentation panel is different. And then you kind of notice like this is a little bit different material, but it's still comfortable to put your, your arm here and your elbow here, eight inch display. I don't mind that actually, because I actually prefer the feeling, I actually like the look of this. I don't mind it. And I like the redundant features for heated seat and heated steering wheel on there. Power-wise, you know, it actually, this little 3.6 actually gets up and runs pretty decent, but we'll see how it compares for fuel economy today. Road noise, I might actually hear a little bit more road noise in this. All right, let's reset our fuel economy now and begin the loop. I haven't driven a Ram 1500 Pentastar in a long time. 
it's just not something that's on my radar. A natural aspirated V6, I just don't have any use for a truck like this. I would need more power for towing and things like this. But this is actually more spirited than I actually figured it would be. It's actually not bad power, surprisingly enough. It would probably suffice for 80% of the truck owners because a lot of truck owners don't actually use a, a truck as a truck. And I'm sure you could tell with this also, it's just gonna rev up and make more noise. But it actually is not bad. I'm kind of surprised. So far, shifting feels good. Trans feels, the shifting feels good. Steering feel, uh, steering wheel's a little bit different in this than the Laramie I just drove, but it's not bad. Um, you are missing your drive modes. You got the smaller display, but I, I don't mind this. I think this is a really nice truck actually, to be fair. Um, I do kind of like the gauge cluster a little more in the Laramie. I think it looks a little better, a little more premium. And they have another gauge cluster. It's even more premium than the last Laramie I drove, which is all digital. It offers a lot of like customization, but I actually prefer like more of the analog gauges personally. This truck does, as you can see, it does have the start stop feature as well. But interior comfort feels nice. All right, so we'll get on the highway now. Let's see how the 3.6 liter engine accelerates here. I'm gonna use the same amount of acceleration. It does have to rev up a little more, no surprise. It doesn't have turbos helping with the boost, but it's still pretty quiet. You don't hear a lot of powertrain noise, which I like. I do think there's a little bit more road noise with this truck than the Laramie. And I'm not really surprised because the Laramie is gonna have more sound deadening for wind noise, road noise, tire noise than a more of a, like a, a Bighorn truck. Right now we're just touching 70 miles an hour and we're at 2,800 RPMs. So we'll now set the cruise control at 70. Got our lane keeping system, I did turn on. So with the eight inch display, the button's down here, whereas the 12 inch, it's up here. Ram has really done a great job in the last 10 years with their pickup trucks. They've went from, you know, kind of used to being considered, you only buy a Ram if it's like the low cost truck to in a lot of ways, class leading and benchmark for interior road noise and just interior. Look how nice the interior of this is. I mean, this used to be, and actually still is this day, this is a lower trim level truck, believe it or not. There's probably four or five levels above this truck for trim packages, and this is still super nice. I mean, it's got adaptive cruise, it's got lane keeping, it's got a nice, like, almost like a leather type of material steering wheel, eight-speed transmission, remote start. I mean, this is a really nice truck. And yet, 10, 15 years ago, you wouldn't have thought of a Ram as of this quality, and Ram has really stepped up their game. It's really taken a lot of market share from Ford and GM, and, and I don't know, maybe some Toyota customers as well. This truck does not have the drive modes. It doesn't have the integrated brake controller as well. It also does not have the wireless charging. Now, I'm at 70. It did have to downshift, and it jumped it up to like 2,200 RPMs to get up that last hill. So that's kind of interesting. And then now it's settled in at around just shy of 2000 RPMs. I'm gonna say maybe 1900 RPM. So it's a little bit higher RPM than the Hurricane inline twin turbo six cylinder we just drove. So we're gonna be getting off at the halfway point now. Um, I like some of these features. My truck doesn't have this in the display and I, I really like, I've gotten spoiled now driving these new trucks with the adaptive cruise and lane keeping, lane centering technology. I'll tell you, once you have that, it's really hard to go back to not having those nannies. You also realize how you get so reliant on that technology and uh, you get kind of sloppy as a driver. But I was just gonna show you some of the different vehicle info. See our coolant temp 219, trans temp 176, oil temp 214, oil pressure 32 PSI. Just standard acceleration going through right now. And you can see it kind of gets up to around 2,500 to 3,000 as you accelerate in some of these cases. I did see two downshifts on the highway to maintain 70 miles an hour. I'll be curious if we see any of that on the return trip. We're gonna set our cruise again. For some odd reason, it's set at kilometer per hour but yet all the other units are not in metric units. Okay, so we're in a flat right about right now, and I'm seeing like 19 to 21 miles per hour 
at 70. Not too bad. Gonna see if it's gonna downshift on us here. Right now we're in overdrive. So far it has not downshifted, okay? So that's good. Maybe it's because we had a little bit of wind in our face and trying to climb some hills on the opposite direction. We'll see how it does here in a second on this next little climb. It still hasn't had to downshift, which is good. So it, it kind of tells me something. A little bit more headwind coming the other direction puts this engine over the limit, not towing, where it's gonna pop you out of overdrive and have to shift into uh, seventh gear. So kind of shows you how much difference the power, the low end power of the Hurricane has versus this engine if you are gonna be towing. All right, the verdict, 18.6 miles per gallon for the 17.8 mile loop. So we got about 0.7 miles per gallon better with the 3.6 liter natural aspirated engine versus the Pinastar. Not surprising, twin turbo, little bit of wind, that makes some sense. So then here's the question, what would you go with? With the Hurricane, you get 420 horsepower, 470 foot-pounds of torque with same highway fuel economy, or you could save a little bit of money, what, $2,600, and get the standard Pinastar six-cylinder hybrid, 305 horsepower, 270 torque. The Hurricane has almost double the amount of torque as the Pinastar for this year. For me in towing and my needs, especially if you plan on driving at elevation, I think the Hurricane is a huge step up in that regard. If you're driving more city, fleet, or you're really focusing on fuel economy, yeah, I think the Pinastar would be a little bit better option there. So another interesting thing to me is the Laramie with the standard output Hurricane is $69,000. This is $69,000 Laramie. Whereas the Bighorn, not even a night package Bighorn, or a level two Bighorn is $59,000. So for $10,000 more, you get 200 more foot-pounds of torque, turbo hurricane engine, leather interior, power seats, nicer rims, nicer tires, uh, nicer instrumentation, 12-inch display, navigation, running boards, LED lights in the bed of the truck. To me, I feel like it's a better value. It'd be one thing if this Bighorn was $15,000, $20,000 less, but it's not. And you get the dual exhaust out of the back of the Laramie, whereas you don't on this base Bighorn. If you're interested in any of these three trucks today that I videoed, I'll put contact information below where you could get a hold of these guys for these trucks. I hope you enjoy this video on the 2025 Ram 1500s. Thanks for watching.